Hey gang, what's up? Welcome back here to another edition of Intuitive Angling. And man, I really appreciate you guys checking today's video out. And man, I got a good video for you guys today. I got a story and I've got a tip and technique. I'm going to talk about the uh, person that taught me about flutter spoon fishing um, nearly 40 years ago. This was a guy, uh, Ozark Master here, that sort of developed the technique. Um, some of you guys, the old timers, may know who he is. But this is a really interesting story. And I had a chance to learn how to fish a flutter spoon before about anyone else in the country did because this guy developed a technique uh, many, many years ago. So we'll get into that. Um, real quick, guys, I want to remind you about our Father's Day sale on my Solar Bat RB2 Series uh, sunglasses. Uh, if you buy a pair before Father's Day, you get them at 30% off. Um, guys will absolutely love these things. These are the most awesome glasses made by Dr. Gary Nesty, the own Solar Bat. He's an optometrist. The optical clarity is unbelievable in these things. So I'll put the Solar Bat RB2 link in the description if you guys are interested in getting a pair. Much appreciated. Okay, guys, I'm going to tell you the story about um, Dick Collier. Some of you guys may know Dick Collier. Um, Dick Collier is an Ozark legend here back in Missouri, especially Tabor Rock and Bull Shoals. In fact, he, he was one of the first guys that developed the technique for fishing for suspended fish. Um, some of you old time Bassmaster readers will have remembered there was, they did an article, Bassmaster did an article on him back in the early eighties talking about his technique for fishing a jig and pig for suspended fish down here at Tabor Rock. And guys, when I first started fishing buddy tournaments back in the late 1970s and early eighties, Dick Collier and his partner, a guy named Jerry Cothra, they won everything. They were like so far ahead of everybody else because they they figured out how to catch deep suspended fish with a flutter spoon, which is what we're going to talk about today, and a and a jig, and it was just unbelievable. And anyway, um, I had a chance to to become friends with Dick as as the years went on. He uh, was part owner in one of the the boat dealerships here in Springfield, Missouri. So he sort of helped me, took me under his wing, and he took me out and he showed me how to fish a flutter spoon. Now this, you gotta remember this, this was back in the late 70s and early 1980s. Nobody fl fished a flutter spoon. It's like, you didn't, w when you saw a spoon back then, you related it to like some dude up in Canada fishing for musky or northern pike. The, the only spoons back there were like those, those, uh, black, those red and white ones, you know, you used to see in the old ads. But anyway, Dick had figured out the, the silver flutter spoon deal and he took me down and showed me and I'm gonna share you guys a couple techniques. Um, first of all, one of the things that was unique about Dick, or is, he's, he still lives in here in Springfield, Missouri, is he figured out how to catch suspended bass with nothing but a flasher. Now this is back in the days of flashers with no GPSs, nothing like that. And he took me down to Tabor Rock. The first, I'll never forget the first time he took me down to Tabor Rock was about 1981, 1982. And um, he, uh, uh, one second guys, I've got a car pulling in the driveway. I'll be right back. See. Sorry about that guys, had a car coming down the driveway. I had to go check it out there. So anyway, let's get back into Dick's story. So Dick took me down to Tabor Rock Lake and he's gonna show me how to fish this flutter spoon, which I'd never heard about. You know, this is something that People used jigging spoons, but they didn't use flutter spoons. So we got out there along a main lake bluff. Now this was a channel swing bluff on the main lake of Tabor Rock. He got his boat like in 50 to 60 foot of water and he took his flutter spoon and it wasn't the flutter spoons like you see today. This is the more modern day larger one. It was the uh, sort of a compact diamond three quarter ounce little flutter spoon like that. And we got there and he'd make a long cast parallel to that bluff in like 40 to 60 foot of water and he said now what we're going to do is we're going to figure out the depth of the fish so the the for about the first 10 or 15 minutes <clears throat> we're working down this bluff and he'd cast out there and he'd count to five and he, then he started popping it like that popping it just letting it go down popping it like that trying to keep it in that zone where you know counting to five the bait was probably i don't know 10 foot down or so did that for 15 or 20 minutes so then after that, he went to 15. <clears throat> Threw it out there, you know, counted to 15. Same thing, he started working it back and we're working down the bluff here. Then after that, he went to 20. Started to count to 20 and same thing. And at that one, once he hit 20, the count of 20, that's when he started catching them. He started catching these big fat Kentuckys that were suspended in the tops of these trees off the end of the bluff. So I'm guessing on that flutter spoon, 
on a long cast with the line with the line drag and everything it was probably down there sort of in that 30 foot zone something like that and it made me realize i had never i never knew a population of fish existed like that i didn't before that i was just casting a jig and frog next to the bank or throwing a crankbait i had no idea that there were fish suspended out over 60 70 foot of water you got to realize this was like a revolutionary thing that i saw so we went around the lake basically you know making long casts with that flutter spoon catching these big kentuckys so about mid part of the day he goes okay randy i'm going to show you how to, to how to jig a flutter a jig a flutter spoon so what he did is that we got to this one bluff end the end of a bluff where these fish were you know we were catching them casting the flutter spoon down there and we got vertical we got on the bluff end and we took the flutter spoon and dropped it straight down and he'd start jigging it like a jigging spoon but he said the key on this thing was not to use a swivel he just put it right on the o-ring and he'd jerk it up like that and then he'd just hold it like that and he jerked, he jerked it up for probably 15 or 20 times and then he would hold it and he said what you had to do the reason he jerked it so many times and then held it is once you held it stationary like this there would be so much line twist in the spoon that the spoon would start turning like that in a circle and that's how we caught him it's like we'd hold it like that and let that spoon unravel and all of a sudden you just feel a tick on there set the hook and you'd have him with that but those are that's my first two experiences with the flutter spoon you got to realize that this was this was a revolutionary technique this is something that everybody considers common now because everybody you've seen so much guys jacking big ones down at gunnersville and all these big summer lakes like pickwick with the big flutter spoons you take it for common that it's just been around forever but this was the the birth of it back here at table rock lake with dick collier so I think one of the neat things about bass fishing is that, man, you've got to honor the people that came before you. Um, there, I, I was so fortunate to grow up here in the Ozarks because this area that I fished right here in the Ozarks and still live, this is where the birth of so many techniques came. The birth of jerkbait fishing came here, flutter spoon fishing, you know, to a large degree, a lot of the popularity of the square bill crankbait came here. So, um, and this was stuff that took place over 40 years ago that we use commonplace now. So, but anyway, guys, this has been replaced now by the more modern day flutter spoons. This is, this right here is just a, you know, five or six inch model. They got them all the way up to 10 inches long. Um, this is a summertime technique as far as if you're wanting to learn the more modern day aspects of it, this is something that works right now. Now. As far as the big flutter spoons, guys, um, I haven't. You, you see these guys throwing these big giant ones, like nine and ten inch ones. I simply just haven't done that good on them. But I have caught quite a few fish on them more in the five and six inch model, like this. Fairly slow fall. Um, these are fairly thin, so when they, they they sort of wobble through the water when they fall like that. But it's sort of the same thing that every all the fish that I catch on the modern flutter spoon is a throwback to what Collier, Dick Collier taught me years ago and the fact that you're throwing that thing out there and just popping it back like that all the way out there. The flutter spoon, um, don't be intimidated by it. For some reason, I think a lot of people, when they think about a spoon, they think, well, man, that's a hard bait to fish. I don't know where to fish it. I don't know how to fish it. You know, I probably, I haven't caught many fish on it not many guys have caught fish on flutter spoons guys you hear a lot about them but in reality the average bass angler has not caught many bass on the flutter spoon so what i want to tell you about it is don't be intimidated by the fact that you may not have done very good on it because it's an easy lure to fish it's an easy bait to fish it's easy to find fish i'll give you guys two tips as far as how to do it depending upon the lake that you're in if you're on a man-made impoundment that has typical uh you know, structures like main lake and secondary points just get on some secondary and main lake points and just get out there get your boat in anywhere between 15 to 20 foot of water and just start fan casting all over that point start out like what dick collier told me start out casting it down letting it fall five or ten on five or ten count and start working it back and eventually let it go all the way to the bottom and hop it off the bottom you're gonna locate the fish eventually with that. The, the fish live on points in the summertime. Flutter spoon is gonna get a reaction strike out of them. And if you fish um, ledge lakes, like some of the TVA lakes or some of the lakes that don't, that have more the lowland impoundments that don't have the typical man-made reservoirs, 
just get out there on those ledges and creek channel intersections. Find a topographical map, get your GPS mapping, find the places where little creek channels intersect the main river out there and do the same thing. Cast that flutter spoon up on top of the, the flatter part of the ledge and just hop it down that ledge. It's real easy to do. If, if you can throw it out there, let it sink to the bottom or let it sink and just go like that, you can catch fish on a flutter spoon. Most of the time I'm going to be fishing at anywhere on 15 to 20 pound test Seaguar and Vizex fluorocarbon line. Um, I do like a fairly stiff rod. The, the rod I use is that Mega Bass Perfect Pitch. It's a seven foot two inch, sort of a medium heavy. So you need a rod at least seven foot and you need a fairly stiff rod because these baits, depending upon the size of the spoon, can weigh, you know, a couple ounces like that. So anyway, guys, get you some flutter spoons. It's a great way to catch fish in the summertime. It's the best months, in my opinion, are June, July, and August, right in the middle of it right now. So uh, give it a try. It's just something else you can catch a fish on. So we'll talk later.